Hello grade 10 students. Today I am going to do year end evaluation 2019 Western Province paper. So this is paper 2. You get 3 hours for that. You already know that there are 2 parts A and B and each part you get 6 questions but you have to answer only 5 questions. And here in this paper spaces are not provided and you can ask for line papers. If you are drawing the graph, you have to ask for a graph paper as well. Now here in the first page, it's given question number one and two. Next page three, four, five, six. Then you get part B. Question number seven, eight, nine, ten. And the last page, 11 and 12. So let's do this paper. Let's take question number one in paper two. This is about working man days and you need to find out man hours. So let's do it. It is estimated that 12 workers can complete a certain task in five days by working eight hours per day. In first three days, all the 12 workers were assigned for the task and all of them work two hours over time. What is the magnitude of work in man hours? So how many workers? So we have to write down separately. How many workers? 12. And how many days? That's 5. And 8 hours per day. So hours 8. So you need to find out what is the magnitude of work in man hours. So how you find out man hours? That's 12 times 5 times 8. 12 times 5, 60, 60 times 8, 480 man hours are there. How many man hours were completed in first three days? Now it says in first three days all the 12 workers were assigned for the task and all of them worked two hours over time. Then how many men? That's 12. Days only three days they worked. And how many hours now? Earlier 8 hours now, 2 hours overtime means 8 plus 2, 10 hours they worked. What was the man hours completed? Man hours completed. That's 12 times 3 times 10. 12 times 3, 36. 36 times 10, 360 man hours completed within 3 days. So how many marks for these two parts? So you are getting two marks for this and two marks for the other part. Let's take the next one. What fraction of the whole work is done in first three days? So we saw that out of 480 man hours, 360 already completed within three days. So 480 and here 360 as a fraction. So 0, 0 get cancelled out. 9 times 4 and 9 times. Not 9 times. You have, it is divisible by 4. 4 times 9. 4 times 12. Again, it's divisible by 3. 3 times 3. 3 times 4. So, 3 fourths of work completed within 3 days. After 3 days, 7 workers were assigned for another task. If it is decided to complete the remaining work with remaining workers on expected date, how many hours should a man work per day? Now it says after three days work. So no, 
what is the remaining number of hours? So you have to subtract. Remaining number of hours we have to find first. Remaining number of hours. 480 minus 360. That's 8 minus 6, 2, 4 minus 3, 1. 120 man hours there. How many men are there now? Workers. Now 7 workers were assigned for another task. Earlier it was 12. 12 minus 7. Now only 5 workers are there. Then we don't know how many hours they need to work. But we know how many days now. Three days already worked. So, here yeah, they plan to do five day work. So, three days already gone. So, now the two days are there. And all together 120 man hours are there. So, how many hours? 5 times 2, 10. You have to divide by 10. 120 divided by 10. So they need to work 12 hours per day. 12 hours per day. How many marks? So you are getting 3 marks for this part. And 3 marks for this so they are asking how many hours should a man work per day? 12 hours. So we gave all 10 marks for this question. Let's take question number 2. That's about quadratic graphs. This time already given the graph. So you have to refer the graph and answer the questions. Using the graph shown in the figure, answer the following questions. What is the minimum value of the quadratic equation? So, we have to look at the minimum value in the graph. Can you see? This is at minus 3. You have to read the y value. So, minimum value is minus 3. Write the coordinates of the turning point of the function. Here, yeah, what's the coordinate? x equals 0 y equals minus 3, 0 minus 3. So how many marks for that? You are getting 2 marks for writing down the minimum value and 2 marks for writing down the coordinates. Part 3. Write the equation of the quadratic function in the form y equals ax squared plus b. We know the minimum point. With minimum point, how can you write down the equation? Minimum point is 0 minus 3. We can easily write down the equation using that. So, here x equals 0 means x minus 0 squared comes. And minus 3 is there. This is minus 3. Now how you identify the a term? There's a coefficient before x squared. How you find out? You can take any point and substitute. We'll take this point. B point. When x equals 2, y equals 1. x equals 2, y equals 1. So, we will substitute into the equation because it is already on the curve. So, y equals 1, a, x equals 2. Two times 2, 4, 4, a equals minus 3 when you take it to this side, 1 plus 3, that is 4. So, divide by 4, you get 
A equals 1. So that means what's the equation of the curve? We can write y equals x squared minus 3. A equals 1 and here you don't need to write down this 0. So y equals x squared minus 3. So I'll write here y equals x squared minus 3. This is the equation of the quadratic function. Write the interval of the values of x where the function increase negatively. Increasing here to here. But we want increasing negatively. So increasing negatively means here to here. So we have to read this point. So here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 squares represent 1 unit. So 5 squares 1 unit mean very small square is 0 0.2. So, one small square is 0 0.2 along x-axis. Now, we'll read this point. So, 1, so 2, 4, 6 in between. 7. So, 1.7 is the value here and here is 0. So, how can you write down? x is in between 0 and 1.7, the function is increasing negatively because it's below the x-axis. Write the equation of the straight line which passes through the points A and B. So, to find out this equation, you need the gradient and y-intercept. So, y-intercept means where it cuts the y-axis. So, that's C equals minus 1 already we can see. How we find out the gradient? We need the two points. Read the two points. When x equals minus 1, y equals minus 2. Minus 1, minus 2 is 1 point. The other point is 2 comma 1. Can you remember the equation to find out the gradient? Gradient is equal to m, difference between y coordinates over difference between x coordinates. So we can plug, we can take any point first and then subtract. We'll take this one, minus 2, minus 1. Then you have to take the same thing first, minus 1, minus 2. So you get minus 3 over minus 3. That's 1. So the gradient is 1. Y intercept is minus 1. So what's the equation of the straight line? That's y equals mx plus c form. Substitute m. That's 1. That's x then. You don't need to write 1 x. And y intercept is minus 1. So y equals x minus 1. So how many marks for all these steps? So you are getting, writing down the equation x squared minus 3, you get 2 marks. And writing down the range of x, you get 2 marks. And Finding the equation of the straight line y equals x minus 1, another 2 marks. 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we gave 10 marks for the whole question. Question number 3, this is about equation. So you have to make two equations, simultaneous equations and Solve. Number of children who came to see a film in a certain day is twice the number of adults who came to see the film. The total income gained by selling the tickets on that day was 14,000 rupees. 
if the price of a child ticket is 100 rupees and the price of an adult ticket is 150 rupees by taking the number of children who came to see the film as x and the number of adults who came to see the film as y build up a pair of simultaneous equations so that means first thing you have to take what is x and what is y x is the number of children number of children we can take as x number of adults we can take as y then build up a pair of simultaneous equations so what's the first thing we can do we can say the number of children who came to see a film in a certain day is twice the number of adults so adults is y so what is x x becomes 2y that's the first thing you can write this is doubled then you can create another equation related to the price of tickets so one child's ticket is 100 rupees x children are there so 100 x they are giving then adult ticket is 150 y adults are there that's 150 y what's the total it says the total income gain is 14,000. So that's our second equation. Then what we do? We have to solve the two equations. So this is the first part. Build up a pair of equations. So how many marks for that? You are getting four marks for writing down the two equations. Now we'll try to solve that solve the two equations and find the value of x and y so we have x equals to y and 100x plus 150y equals 14,000 what is the first thing we can do we can take x as 2y either you can use substitution method or subtraction method instead of x i can put 2y so we'll do substitution so take the second equation i can write 100x plus 150 instead of y oh i can do other way around it's easy to plug Instead of x, that's 2y plus 150y equals 14,000. 2 times 100, 200. 200 plus 150. y equals 14,000. And what's y? y becomes 14,000 divide by. 200 plus 150 you get 350 so 0 get cancel out 7 times 5 7 times 200 200 divided by 5 that's 40 so y means number of adults so 40 adults are there now we have to find out the x value number of children so that's Using the first equation, I can find x is 2y, 2 into 40, that's 80. So that means I can write how many adults and how many children. Number of children that's 80. Number of adults. Forty. 
So you get another four marks for that. So solving the equation, you get four marks. So we have given eight marks already. Part B, make you the subject of the formula. V equals square root of u squared plus 2a. We need to get rid of this square root sign. What you do? What's the inverse of that? You square both sides. V squared is equal to u squared plus 2a. Then we need to keep u squared in one side. So I'll take 2as to this side, minus 2as. So what is u? Square root of v squared minus 2as. But when you are taking the square root, you can take either positive or negative. So you can write positive or negative square root v squared minus 2as. So you get 2 marks. We already given 8 marks. So for this one, just 2 marks. Question number 4, you have to find out is that area. So area is given, you are asked to find out x. So that means you have to form a quadratic equation and solve it. So this first one is algebraic fraction solving. So 2 over x plus 2 plus 1 over 2 times x plus 2 is equal to 1. So what's the lowest common multiple of these two? So you can write 2 and x plus 2. That means we have to make the same denominator. So multiply this by 2. 2 times 2, 4 and you get 1 there. So 4 plus 1, 5. 5 becomes here when you cross multiply. It is like 1. When you cross multiply, you get 2 into x plus 2. Now open brackets. When you open brackets, you get 2x plus 4 equals 5. 2x becomes 5 minus 4. That's 1. 1 equals 2x. Divide both sides by 2. You get x equals half. So how many marks for this one? You are getting 3 marks. Part B. Length of the rectangle flower bed shown in the figure is 4 meters longer than its breadth. If it's x, what is the length? 4 plus x. If the area of the flower bed is 45, this area is 45 square meters. By taking the breadth of it as x, build up a quadratic equation. And you have to solve the equation and find the breadth of the flower bed. So what you can write? Area of the rectangle. Length, that's 4 plus x, into breadth, that's equal to 45. Expand brackets, 4x plus x squared is 45. Take all terms to one side, x squared plus 4x minus 45 becomes 0. So what are the factors of 45 minus 45 to get plus 4. Now when you multiply these two you get minus 45 x squared. Minus means you have to take the difference. So what are the appropriate factors? 9 and 5. But which one is positive? The middle term is positive means the bigger one is positive. Plus 9 x and minus 5 x. So you can split the Middle term, 2 plus 9x and minus 5x. So take first two and last two separately. When you take x, that's x plus 9. 
when you take minus 5 out. What's remaining? x plus 9. Now x plus 9 is common. Take it. And what's the other factor? You get x minus 5. Two factors are equal to 0. Two factors are equal to 0 means either one factor is equal to 0. So x plus 9 is equal to 0 or x minus 5 is equal to 0. So what's the x value? Take 9 to the other side minus 9 or you get plus 5. Can you get a negative answer for x? x is the breadth of the rectangle. x cannot be negative so x becomes 5. So x is 5 means what's the breadth? Breadth of the flower bed. Breadth is 5 meters. So breadth of the flower bed is 5 meters. So how many marks for this part? You are getting 3 marks for creating the equation. So that's this one. And solving, you are getting another 4 marks. So 4 and 3 7 and the previous part we gave 3 marks. So altogether 10 marks. Question number 5. It says a person is at the top of a 50 meter tall building, observes a foot of a lamp post at an angle of depression of 40 degrees and the top of the lamp post at an angle of depression of 30 degrees. Using the given information, draw a scale diagram and find the highest of the lamppost. So we have to draw the scale diagram. Before that, we'll sketch it and see. It says a person is at the top of 50 meter tall building. So one is 50 meters. That's the tall building. Observing a foot of a lamp post at an angle of depression 40. So we'll take lamp post here. So the foot of the lamp post he observes with the 40 degrees depression. So this angle is 40. So that means this is 40. Then top of the lamp post at an angle of depression 30. So if this is the top of the lamp post this is 30 given using the given information draw a scale diagram and find the height of the lamp post so we need this one this height so we have to draw the scale drawing and measure it now to draw the scale diagram you need the ruler we can take the Protractor to measure angles and we'll draw it. So you have to select a scale. What's the scale you can take? 50 meters are there. So I'll take 10 meter represent. I'll take 10 meter represent 1 centimeter. So that means for 50 meters I have to take 50 divided by 10, 5 centimeter length. So first take the ruler. Take the ruler and you have to draw a line here, vertical line. So for that first we'll draw the horizontal line. Then you can use the set square because we need 90 degree angle. So this is 90. So we'll take the set square.
and we can keep on top of the ruler and draw the lamp post here we don't know the height and before that what can you do before drawing the lamp post we can draw this one so here what you do take the set square we can draw the tall building so we know the height of the tall building so 50 meters means we will take 5 centimeters from this this point 5 centimeters so first we'll draw that so from here 5 centimeters means 5 meters representing so this is the tall building and then we have to use the protractor to measure the angle now see if this is 40 and this is 90 what is this angle this is 90 minus 40 50 degrees and from here we can measure that and how you draw the other line we need this angle this is 30 this is 40 that means this is 10 degrees so 50 plus 10 60 degrees so we can use the protractor and we can measure so this is the top of the building we can measure from here 50 and 60 degrees 50 and 60 from here 50 is here and 60 is here so you can mark the two points now you can connect those two with the ruler this is the top of the building so here here to here is the 50 degree angle and here to here that's the 60 degree angle you need to connect this one now we have to draw the lamp post lamp post is here so that means where it cuts the first time cuts this point so here keep the set square because we need to draw 90 degree angle and now draw the lamp post so this should be the lamp post now this height is the h so here too here is the h value now we have to measure and see we have to measure that's like 1.5 so we get 1.5 is the height of the lamp post that's the scale length scale length is equal to 1.5 meter 5 centimeters so what's the actual length actual length becomes 1.5 multiplied by 50 not 50 10 meters 1 centimeter 1.5 centimeters that's multiplied by 10 15 meters is the height of the lamp post so move one one place to the right the decimal point now we have to mark everything these angles are 
mark 50 here and this one 60 and we know this is 5 centimeters and that's the diagram so you get full marks for the whole question so how you get marks here for the scale diagram you get four marks and for the sketch you get three marks and for finding the actual length of the lamp post you get three marks so all together 10 marks for that question Question number six, it's about statistics question. You have to find out the module class and mean value. So we'll do it separately. Following table elicits the profit gained by a certain lottery ticket seller from selling the lottery tickets within last 30 days. What is the module class of this distribution? So the widths are all equal. These are boundaries given. There are no gaps in between the values. So what's the model class? One which has the highest one. So 500 to 550. And this is about price. So 500 to 550 rupees is the model class. So you get one mark for that. By taking the mid value of the model class as assumed mean, calculate the mean profit gained by seller during a day. So we have to write down profit that's in rupees and we can find out the mid value. We'll take it as x and frequency that's number of days 2, 3, 5, 9, 4, Four, three. It says 30 days. And profit 350 to 400. 400 to 450. First you have to write down all the intervals. And how you find out the midpoint? You have to add then divide by 2. The 2 boundary values and we can find out the total as well mid value 350 plus 400 divided by 2 so that's 750 750 divided by 2 you get 3 and 7 and 5 375 that means adding 25 to the lower bound. So adding 25, 425, 475, 525, 575 and 625 and 675. Now you have to find out the deviation. So what is the assumed mean? It says take the mid value of the model class as the assumed mean. So model class we found 500 to 550. So this is the assumed mean. So we have to take A as 525 and calculate the deviation. Then you need F into D. So deviation here is 0. What's the difference here? 50 is the difference. So here 50 difference so you get minus value above and positive values below now multiply and calculate f into d 2 into minus 150 minus 300 3 into minus 100 minus 300 
5 into minus 50 minus 250. 9 times 0, 0. 4 times 50, 200. 4 times 100, 400. 3 times 150, 450. And now we can add the positive values separately and negative values separately. So you get 10,050 minus. When you add negative values, what you get? 5336 plus 28. 1050 minus 850, you get 200. So 200 is the FD value. Now we can calculate the mean value using the formula. So we found assume mean is that. So mean is equal to assumed mean plus sigma ft over sigma f total frequency into d column divided by the total frequency assumed mean is 525 and this is 200 divided by 30 one zero get cancel out 20 divided by 3 6, 18, or 20 again, 6, 6 like that. So we can write, correct to two decimal places we'll do. So again, another 6, 6 means 6.67. So 525 plus 6.67. So that's the mean income mean profit gained by the seller during a day so that's in rupees so what's the value six seven six plus five eleven three one so five hundred and thirty one rupees and sixty seven cents is the profit per day mean number of profit so how many marks for this part You are getting one mark and six marks for the mean value. So we gave one mark for the mode value. So this is six marks. So let's see how you get marks here. So calculating mid value, you are getting one mark. Then calculating the deviation and multiplication of FD. And the total of FD. That's 4. And substitution. To this formula. That's 5. And final answer. 6. If it is need to spend 10,000 for a renovation of the selling center. Show that the profit gained by selling the tickets in 20 days will be sufficient for that. He needs money. That's 10,000 rupees for renovation. Now we have to find out what's the profit for 20 days. 20 into profit per day. 531. 531 and 67 cents. So what's the value? Multiply by 2. 2 times 7, 14. 1 remaining. 2 times 6, 12 plus 1, 13. And 1 remaining. 2 times 1, 2 plus 1, 3. 2 times 3, 6. 2 times 5, 10. And 2 places we have to keep. So this is 10,633. So this value is more than 10,000. So it's enough. So sufficient money is sufficient. So the money gain for 20 days is sufficient to spend 10,000 rupees. So we can write it is sufficient.
So for that you are getting three marks. So we gave ten marks already. Let's see question number seven. That's about progression. So arithmetic progression is there. So let's do this. First four terms of an arithmetic progression is given below. 5, 9, 13, 17. Find the 12th term of the progression. So how you find out 12th term? So you need the first term. First term is 5. And what's the difference? Common difference, you can take any term minus the previous term. So 9 minus 5, the common difference is 4. So how do you find out the 12th term? T12. First term plus N minus 1. N minus 1. 12 minus 1 becomes 11. D. Now substitute. A is 5. D is 4. According to Bodmer's, you have to do multiplication. So multiplication first. 11 times 4, 44. 5 plus 44. 40. Nine. So 49 is the 12th term. Find the sum of the first 12 terms of the progression. So this is S12. We know the first term and the last term because 12th term is the last term. That's 49. So which one you can use? Which formula? N over 2. That's 12 over 2. First term is 5. And the last term 49. So we can use first term plus last term to find out the sum. So what's the answer? 6 into 54. 24, 2 remaining, 30 plus 2, 32. 324 is the sum. So how many marks for that? You are getting... Two marks for this one, first part, and 324, you get three marks. Part three, without using the formula, find the first 13 terms of the progression. So S13, we need to find. So what is S13 means? S12. Plus S, the next term. Next term means the 13th term. But we found S12 is 324. And what is the 12th term? 49. 49 plus 4. You get the 13th term. So 49, so T13 means 13th term. This is not a formula, just writing down how you get the sum of 13 terms, sum of 12 terms plus the 13th term. How you get the 13th term? 49 is the 12th term plus common difference. So what's the answer? 9 plus 4, 13 and 17, 1 remaining. 3 and 7. And 3 is there. 377 is the sum of all 13 terms. Which term of it is 61? 61 is Tn. First term we know that's 5. And we need to find out N. Common difference is 4. Expand brackets. 4n minus 4, 5 minus 4 is 1. When you take it to this side, subtract 1, that's 4n becomes 60, 61 minus 1. Now divide both sides by 4, you get n value. 4 times 1, 4, that's 5. So 15th term is 61 in this arithmetic progression. So let's see how many marks for part three. Three marks and 
next one two marks so three two five and five ten marks for the whole question let's take question number eight that's construction question you can use only the compass and the straight edge so let's do that Using only the straight edge with the scale centimeter, millimeter and the pair of compasses do the following constructions. Construct the triangle ABC where AB is 7.5, BAC angle is 60 and ABC angle is 45. First thing you have to draw a line. And then you have to take the protractor and the ruler. You need 7.5 length. So measure 7.5 and mark it. Both ways you have to do to mark correctly then we know exactly that's 7.5. Then you can mark this is AB. 7.5 centimeters. A angle is 60. So how you draw and construct 60 degree angle take a certain length. You draw an arc here an arc in the middle and take the same distance and draw the other arc. And then you connect it. How you construct 45 degrees. Now we'll first draw the line that 60 degree angle because A angle is 60. Now we have to construct 45. So take the compass. How you construct 45? First you have to draw 90 degrees and then bisect it. Keep the compass on point B. Now you have to construct 90 degrees. So you draw two arcs on both sides with the same distance and then take another distance or same distance is okay and then you can draw the arc in the middle. And no need to connect continuous with the continuous line we'll, because we want only nine, uh, 45 not 90. So I will draw a broken line like this. And now bisect the 90 degree angle. Bisect 90 degree angle. Take certain distance. Draw an arc. Arc here and then take that arc to find the intersecting point in the middle. So this is 45 degree angle. So we can connect it. So this is 45. So 60, 45. And this point is the C point. Then construct a perpendicular to AB. Construct a perpendicular to AB from C. So you have to draw a perpendicular from C. So take the compass. How you draw a perpendicular from a point? You take the C point and take any distance. And you find out where it cuts the AB line. So we'll take a different color. So one point is here. One point is there, so I can't take it. So I'll take a smaller distance. Okay, so one point is here and one point is here. So these are the intersecting points. So then you can keep the compass on that point. And draw the arc. This one, 
and this this one now we can connect c with this so that's the perpendicular drawn from c to a b that's the perpendicular line so this is 90 degrees so how many marks for that so these two steps so you are getting three marks for constructing the triangle 60 degree 45 and then length 5 7.5 three marks and then you get two marks for drawing the perpendicular to AB from C so five marks for those two parts let's do the next one let's take third part construct the locus of points moving equidistance to a and c equidistance to a and c means you have to draw the construct the perpendicular bisector so what are the loci points you need to know equidistance from a point is a circle equidistance from two points is a perpendicular bisector and equidistance from two lines that's the angle bisector and equidistance from a line that's parallel lines above and below so this one is perpendicular bisector so you have to construct the perpendicular bisector to ac so take certain distance you can draw an arc above and below and then yeah again from point c you draw the two arcs and then connect so here this point and this point so that's the perpendicular bisector for ac then fourth part mark the intersection point of the locus of the perpendicular drawn from c to o C as O. So where is O? This point is O. Intersecting point of the these bisectors. Construct the circle with the center O and the radius OA. So OA is the radius. So we have to take the compass. This is the center. And where is the radius o a you have to take o a as the radius construct the circle measure and write the radius of the circle so we have to measure again measure it so this is the circle and we will measure it so I get 3.1 radius is equal to 3.1 centimeter that's the last part fifth part and you see now how many points for other steps we gave marks for two steps two marks for the third part construct the locus of points moving equidistance to a and c and fourth part two marks again constructing the circle and one mark for finding the radius so five and here five, ten marks for that question as well. Question number nine. So that's about content is there. So circumference is given. You, you need to calculate the volume and you have to use the logarithmic tables for the next question. So let's do that. 
in the given cylindrical container circumference is 88 circumference is 88 and the height is 20 calculate its volume so to find out the volume we need pi r squared h r you need you can use the circumference formula 2 pi r circumference of a circle 2 pi r is equal to 88 and you can find out r 2 times pi you can take 22 over 7 into r equals 88 so what is r 7 times 88 divided by 2 times 22 means 44 this becomes 2 7 times 2 14 centimeters is the radius of the base of the circle and volume we need volume pi 22 over 7 r square 14 into 14 into h h is 20 substitute and get the value 7 times 2 2 times 2 I'll take 2 from here 4 4 and 2 80 so 11 2 4 80 and 14 I'll multiply these two 8 times 4 32 3 remaining 8 times 1 8 plus 3 11 multiply by 11 how you easily multiply first and last term you split and then take the addition 2 plus 0 2 then 2 plus 1 becomes 3 1 plus 1 becomes 2 so the volume is 12,320 cubic centimeters. So we'll see four marks for that. Finding R and finding volume, four marks. Let's do the next one. Now you have to find out the answer using logarithmic table. So let's take this one as R. We'll take a letter. R equals 78.5 into 9.321 over 342.6. Then what you have to take? Take log both sides. When you are taking log both sides, what happens? Multiplication becomes addition and division becomes subtraction. Now when you subtract now, you have to first write down the number in scientific notation. 78 means one point something. So you before you Refer the table, write down 9 point something means 0 point. 10 to the power what? You have to find out. The 342 means 1, 2, 2 point something. So you have to subtract 2 point something. Now we can refer the logarithmic tables. What's the value? 78, 5. 78, 5. That's the second one, second table. 89, 49. 89, 49. Then the next one, 93, 21. 93, 20. One, one means just zero. Ninety six ninety four. Thirty four twenty six. Thirty four two and six from this six is eight. 
34, 2 and 8. 53, 48. Now add the first two. 1.8949 and 0 0.9695. Two point eight six four four. Now subtract two point five three four eight. Zero point three two nine six is log of R. How do you find R? Take anti log. Anti log of 0 0.3296 3296 in the table we need to find where you get 3296 3284 is there 96 means you need another 12 213 6, 21, 3, 6, 21, 3, 6 and here 0 point something so that means 2 point in scientific notation that becomes 2.136 that's the answer. Now let's see how many marks. So you are getting 6 marks for that. So let's give marks, six marks for the whole thing. One mark for taking log both sides. And one mark for referring this one, this one, one mark. So you get four marks here. And five, taking the value and taking anti-log value and find the final answer. One mark, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six marks all together, and we gave four marks before, ten marks total. Question number ten you have to prove that in the diagram, center of the circle is O, points A, B, C, D are on the circle. If A, D, B ADB, this angle, is equal to OAB angle. Show that ACB. ACB is 45. Now here we know OA and OB are radii. So this angle is equal to this angle. This angle and this angle same. So we can find out easily. So here we'll put x for this. If this is x, this is also x. So we'll first write down. ADB angle is same as ACB angle. Same segment angles are equal. Then, what you know about this one? If this is x, this becomes 2x. Angle subtended at the center is double as the angle subtended on the circumference. So, we can write AOB is equal to 2x angle subtended at the center. Is double as the angle subtended on the circumference. Then what are the other things we can find out? So what are these two angles?
what are these two? Now, according to in the information, ADB, ADB is equal to OAB. So, this is also X. It's given already. So, we can say AOAB and OBA. Both values are X because of radii and according to the given information. Now we can see OAB is a triangle. Sum of angles in a triangle add up to 180. For X equals 180. So what's X? You get X equals 4 times 4, 16, for 20, that's 5, 45 degrees. So X equals 45 degrees. So what is X? The required angle, ACB. So that's ACB is 45. So you have to prove that ACB angle is 45. So this is one full question. So 10 marks for the whole thing. So we'll give marks for each and every step. This is one, one, two marks for identifying that. Then this one, another one mark. Three. And here we'll give the reason. Four, one mark. And here five. And here six. Adding all to 180, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then this one, 7, 8, 9. And here we have to give one mark for using isosceles triangle as well. Here. According to the information and isosceles, we'll give another one mark for this step as well. Two marks for that. So, altogether, ten marks for the whole question. Question number 11, you have to prove the triangles are congruent, parallel and it's a BCD is a parallelogram. In the given figure, midpoint of AC is B. So, midpoint means this length is equal to this length. AEB, AEB angle and EBD, these two are equal. AE, this length is equal to BD. Show that ABE triangle and BDE triangles are congruent. ABE and BDE. So we know AE is equal to BD and AB. We can first write down the this one. A, E, B angle is equal to E, B, D angle. It's given. So we know when you take the triangle, B, E is common. B is common to both the triangles. Now what can you say? Length, included angle and a length. So we can say the two triangles are congruent. ABE triangle is congruent to BDE triangle. What's the case? S, A, S. Side, angle, side. So how many marks for this one? You are getting... 
three marks for the first step. So three marks for that. Now we take the next one. Show that AB is parallel to ED. So we know these lengths are equal. This one given equal to this one and this one is equal to this one. Now you have to show AB is parallel to this one. Okay, so now look at carefully. This angle is equal to this angle. What can you say about that? Alternate angles are equal. Alternate angles are equal means that it, these two lines are parallel. So first thing you can write A E B angle is equal to E B D angle. Alternate angles are equal. Alternate angles are equal. A E parallel to A E parallel to B D. These two lines are parallel. And also equal. A E is equal to B D from the previous part. Opposite, a pair of opposite sides equal and parallel. That's a parallelogram. Pair of sides equal and parallel. You can say A B D E is a parallelogram. So because it's a parallelogram, A B is parallel to E D. So therefore, A B is parallel to E D. So that's the second part. What about the third part? Prove that B C D is a parallelogram. B C D E is a parallelogram. Now we found out these two sides are parallel. So that means this opposite sides are parallel. But we have to show that. That's equal as well. So we can see that. Now see AB is equal to BC. AB is equal to ED. We found that. AB equals to ED. So that means BC equals to ED. So we'll write down that. We have to write down that step. I'll take this way. Third part. We can write now parallel is okay. So this line is parallel to AB line is parallel to ED. If we can show this opposite lengths are equal, that's also a parallelogram. So we can say AB is equal to BC. But AB is equal to ED because ABDE is a parallelogram. ABDE is a parallelogram. Then what can you say? BC is equal to ED. So BC is equal to ED and BC is e BC parallel to ED. Again, pair of opposite sides equal and parallel. This is a parallelogram. Pair of opposite sides. Equal and parallel. Mm -hmm. 
B, C, B, C, D, E is a palindrome. many marks for that. So we did two parts there. So according to the marking scheme you are getting three and four. Three marks for the second part. Three marks here showing these two lines are parallel and showing this is a parallelogram you get four marks. So we gave three before and here are seven, ten marks all together. Question number 12, that's your last question in paper two. That's about Venn diagrams. So we'll read and try to fill the diagram. A Venn diagram drawn to include the information about 50 students who were participated for a certain drill display is given below. So this is altogether 50. Number of boys who were participated for the drill display was 20. Boys. So girls are there. Outside girls, they should, they should be boys. So that means 20 outside. 18 girls who were participated plait their hair. So here, those who plaited the hair. Here, this one. So, 18 girls who were participated plait their hair. So, that means this is 18. Copy the given Venn diagram in your answer sheet and enter the above information. So, here this is 20, this is 18. We can fill this one. 50 minus 20, 30. 30 minus 18. This should be 12. So that's the diagram. And we'll do the second part on the next page. Find the number of girls who do not plait their hair. Shade the relevant region in the Venn diagram. So find the number of girls who do not plait their hair. Do not plait their hair. That's 12. So we need to shade this region. So we'll shade it. So this part. So we can shade this region as the girls who do not plait their hair. Yeah. This part. So that's this part. Now, what's the number? That's 12. So how many marks for that one? We'll give marks for the first two steps. So you are getting three marks for the diagram. And shading one mark. And finding the answer one mark. So what's the next question? Third part, if the girls represented by A and those who plaited the hair represented by B, write down the shaded region using set notation in terms of A and B. So we know that it says A is girls and B is those who plaited the hair. So what is the shaded region? This is inside A but outside B. So what is outside B means? B dash. But inside A. So the common region for A and outside B. A intersection B dash is the shaded region. So how many marks for that step? Two marks you are getting. Part 4, 
from the students who were participated for the drill display 25 wore in red t-shirts number of girls who wore red t-shirts were 12 draw another venn diagram and include this information so there's another set that's red t-shirts wearing red t-shirts so we'll try to draw another venn diagram for that so this is the entire set and we can draw three circles now. Here we'll take the big one is girls and the smaller one is plaited hair and the other one it says from the students who were participate for the drill display 25 wore in red t-shirts number of girls who wore red t-shirts were 12 so we can draw a circle crossing these three so that's the circle with wearing red t-shirts so we can say wool red t-shirts and that's this circle this is girls and this is who plat plattered the hair Yeah, this circle and now we can fill the values so it says again read it 25 wore in red t-shirts so 25 and it says number of girls who wore red t-shirts were 12 so this part whole thing is 12 we don't know exactly whether this region or this region so the whole thing is 12 and 25 minus 12, this is 13. And 18 before for this whole circle. And 12 here we can't mark. What about the outside now? Earlier 20, now 13 already there. So this should be 7. 13 plus 7, 20. Now we'll give marks for this one. So you are getting 2 marks for the diagram. This is 2 marks. So we gave all together 10 marks for the whole question. So this is the last question in paper 2. I hope that first you do the paper and then watch my video to check your answers.